Hello everyone, welcome to New Year's Eve, Friday, 2021, December 31st. <laughs> so, um, I'd like to do a short recap here first, and we'll just talk a little bit, you know, um, this year's been a wild one for a lot of us. Uh, last year was a fucking wild one for a lot of us too, and um, as it turns out, I don't really expect it to ever get less intense, you know. Um, but as we're approaching New Year's Eve, and I know that a lot of people are getting ready to go out and party, uh, a lot of people are going, getting ready to go out to parties and do a lot of different wild stuff, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about that, you know, that lifestyle, um, you know, who I used to be in that lifestyle. Um, before I started this live, I sat down and I prayed to the, uh, you know, just God, please help me speak your words. You know, I give you my mouth, please speak to your people. Um, and then I just looked around the room casually for whatever reason, you know, it just seemed like the right thing to do. And, you know, I like writing lettering a lot. And so a few things popped, you know, right up. And as you can see right behind me, there's a little sign here that says, stay humble. Um, I've got another one that I read that said envision and then another one that said focus inward. And those were the first three things that came to um, my attention when I looked around the room. So, what's up, Stanley? I want to use that as a way to kind of talk about this topic. Um, I'm really passionate about this. Um, it's tempting for me to yell, but I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna really try to express my my true soul and my true um, purpose here, as well as the energy that I really have about this subject matter. Um, first off. Um, if you know me, what's up, Lacey, honey, love you. If you know me, uh, you probably know that uh, I don't really approve of partying a lot. I don't really like co-sign on people getting high or fucking drunk, stuff like that. I used to do that a lot, you know. Um, and the reason why, and I know everybody has a reason why they want to use, everybody has a reason why they like smoking or drinking or whatever else. It's just a wind down. It's just a this, that, or the other. But the reason why is because for myself, um, you know, I didn't know how to live inside me. I didn't know how to live as me and not hate me and not hate reality and not hate everything. I had a conversation with Lacey the other day about how intense it used to be when people would just ask me, Justin, why do you fucking hate yourself so much? And I would be like, what are you talking about, man? I love me. What are you talking about? But it, it's painfully obvious to me when I look at my old behaviors that I absolutely hated living in my head. Um, and the reason why, uh, it's obvious is the, the exact same as the title of this talk is just any excuse to escape reality. Um, I know a lot of people are getting ready to make a lot of new year's resolutions. <laughs> a lot of people are getting ready to do some new stuff, uh, to try to make some big changes in your life. I want to, first of all, encourage you to stick with those changes Please don't let this be another year where you say, this is going to be the year I fucking kill it. This is going to be the year I change everything. This is going to be the year I get my health in order. This is going to blah, 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 blah. I want you to commit to that so thoroughly that it's not a matter of like, oh, well, this is my resolution. This is a matter of I am a changed person. I am going to become this person. Come hell or high water, come any type of obstacle, I will become the person I was destined to be. But if you do choose to go out tonight, um, I'm going to preface this whole talk with this real quick and we'll get real into it here. Please be fucking careful. I've lost too many people I love. Um, I have Cassie right here looking on in the background. Um, I've lost too many people. I know everybody's lost too many people out there and... When we live in that lifestyle where you're just trying to get out of your head, any excuse to just go to a party, to just not be fucking mentally there, um, it's really easy to make poor decisions. One bad decision can affect the rest of your life. It can affect the rest of everybody else's lives around you. It could leave you dead. I know that nobody, <laughs> I know a lot of people that intended to overdose and couldn't make it work. And I know a lot of people or I used to know a lot of people that probably didn't mean to and uh, aren't here anymore. So please use this as a time. If you really do hear my words, if you can hear 
the level of care that I have in my voice right now because I really want to express that above all other things. Use this New Year's to take a little bit of time and focus on you. And I'm not saying do you, do this. I'm, I'm saying I want you to focus on this and why this hurts. I want you to figure out what the fuck it is that's driving the behaviors that make you miserable. I want you to figure out what the fuck it is that's driving the, the need to make changes in your life, the belief that you need to make changes in your life, and why that's not worked until now. And I want you to take the time to envision a life where that thing doesn't hold you back anymore. To take the time to realize that literally it's just you versus you. It's not the world making it hard, it's you making it hard on you. It's you not believing that you are worth your own effort. It's not, it's, it's, I wish I could describe to you how hard it was and how hard it is to see how much pain I used to be in and the different person I am now. I'm not saying I don't go through pain, but I'm saying that I adjust and like literally address the pain as I experience now instead of running from it. And I know a lot of people are like, well, it's New Year's. You got to get out. You got to party. You no, know, you don't. You really don't. Like if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. I can't convince you not to, but I can say that I've reached a point in time in my life where escaping reality as a way to like celebrate is not something that makes sense to me anymore. And if you want something like that, you can make that work in your life too. You just have to find the people that have interest in doing that and not hang out with the people that don't have an interest in doing that. And that might mean that you need to get a whole new circle of friends. That's hard to say, but it's real. Because I believe that I'm around a group of people now that if that was my intention, I'm going to go out and get fucking tanked tonight. They'd be like, why, dude? What does that serve you? How does that help you? In what way does that benefit you? Does that build you up? Are you just going to be able to have a story about how tanked you were with your friends next year? I want you to know that once I got out of myself, once I stopped living in my fucking feelings 24-7, I realized very quickly how obvious it was that I was living in my feelings 24-7, that I believed I was my feelings and when we focus inward, we can really turn the tides in a major way because we realize that we are, if I could use a metaphor, sitting at a bus stop and watching our emotions and the actions of life go back and forth around us. I've got massive goosebumps on my whole body. I'm so passionate about this, guys. Please take this to heart. And we can watch these buses go by and maybe the bus of anger pulls up, but that's not the destination we want to go. So we just look at the bus as it pulls up and we allow it to leave. We see the bus of childhood trauma come up and ask, do you want to get on the bus? And you say, no, thank you. Let it go. Because not only will it take you places you don't want to fucking go, you need to stop getting on the buses. Stop getting in cars. Stop traveling to places that you don't want to be at. Especially when you have to pay a toll to get on that bus. And the hardest part about it is that the more time you spend avoiding the experience of understanding that you are not those emotions, you are not the pain, you are not the trauma, you are not the things that have happened to you, you are not the things that you are doing. You are the observer of those things. You are the soul behind your experiences. Suddenly, the ability to change things becomes so clear-cut. Action produces results. Lacey and I were playing a game last night, and one of the questions was, it's like a couple's game where you ask each other questions, and one of the questions was, would you rather be able to change the past or predict the future or see into the future? And I thought I had a simple answer for it. It was like, I think I already know the answer to that, and uh, I'd say I'd rather be able to predict the future because to a large degree and extent, I can. And she says, well, no, because God only knows what's happening in the future. And she's correct, but if I act like the best version of me. If I can stand up and be Justin motherfucking Hadlock in every aspect of my life, it doesn't matter what fucking happens in the future. I know that I can predictably say that I have done the best that I can do and that I can be okay with that. That I can be proud of myself as long as I act like the best version of me. And that is in its own way, a way of predicting the future. 
I know that I can predict the future, that if I stay in position and I become the person that will achieve the things I want, that those things will happen. I may not be able to predict the order they happen in. I may not be able to predict the exact time that they will happen in. But to a large extent, I can predict and manipulate the future based off of my current actions. So I'm asking you tonight on New Year's Eve, are you going to do something that builds you? Or are you going to do something that tears you down? Do you want to wake up weaker tomorrow and one more day away from your goals? One more day away from the best version of you? Or do you want to wake up even closer to that goal? Do you want to have to roll over and search for some fucking ibuprofen and some water and try to get rid of a fucking hangover that feels like it's never going to end? Or do you want to roll over and say, I'm so excited to keep living my life? Another year in the books. This year has been the most difficult, rewarding, challenging, amazing experience of my life. It's been the most painful and the most pleasurable at the same time. I've regained a connection to my God that I haven't fucking had in over two decades. I've lost one of the most important people in the world to me. I've gained another person who is also another one of the most important people in the world to me. And what I'm here to tell you is throughout all of that, I've stayed clean. Throughout literally losing my business, my house, my family, my fiance, all in the same two weeks, I stayed clean. I stayed present. I lived through the pain and I came through it on the other side. I stayed on that bus stop and I just prayed to God to please, please give me the strength to not get on the wrong bus, to not allow my thoughts and anger and allow my pain to carry me down a road I don't want to go on. Because once you're on that bus, once you've boarded that bus that isn't going where you want to go, you have to at very least stay on till the next stop. Once you get on, you can't just get off. Once you choose to take something, once you choose to escape, once you choose to jump into that anger, whatever it is that you're struggling with, whatever it is that you're avoiding, you can't get back on or off once you've boarded or gotten off. When you get off of the one that's going where you want to go, you have to wait until the opportunity comes back again. And nothing in life is personal. Like really... I want you to absorb that too. Like nothing that I say is personal attack on anybody here. Nothing is designed for me to try to hurt your feelings other than to try to tell you the truth, which means sometimes I do have to allow the idea that I might hurt somebody's feelings for saying that. I do need to allow people to be themselves, but that's because I can't literally force you to do anything. But what I can do is speak the truth and hopefully, hopefully it picks at that scab enough that you get tired of it. And maybe, just maybe, you allow yourself to heal that wound and stop feeling like you need to run from everything. Because I don't care what holiday it is. I don't care what time of year it is, what's happened, what's not happened, what's good, what's not good. I don't find any excuse in my life anymore to want to escape myself. The clarity, the beauty, the love, the fulfillment of walking in my purpose and being clear-headed as I do it is not worth anything in my life. Nothing, nothing is more valuable to me anymore than my clarity and my peace of mind. Literally. Not even my own kids. I know that sounds fucked up, but I can't make intelligent decisions about my children's lives if I don't have clarity and peace of mind in my own life. Happy parents raise happy children. Well-rounded spiritual parents raise well-rounded spiritual children. If you cannot keep yourself in order, you cannot keep your family in order. You must take care of this. You must take care of this. And on that note too, remember, your kids will always fail to listen to you. They will always fail to listen to you. It's just human fucking nature but they will not fail to emulate you. Do you want your kids to see 
your dad or your mom being an embarrassment? Do you want them to feel like they're not convenient, so, like so that they have to be taken somewhere so mom and dad can go out and get shit faced? For what? You guys can do whatever you want, but just please be safe. Consider the long-term ramifications. Consider the things that you're bringing to the table for your family and your loved ones and how those things are going to affect them because it isn't just about you. Life is not about how you fucking feel. Peace of mind doesn't imply that I'm happy. Peace of mind apply, like, implies that I'm at peace with experiencing any emotion that comes up. It implies that I'm at peace with pain as much as I'm at peace with joy. I don't let joy carry me down the fucking road any more than I do pain. Peace of mind requires me realizing that I am not my emotions. I am not me. I am the spirit inside of me that is intrinsically and intertwined and irrevocably attached to everything else in this world and every other person and my God. And the second I start saying, well, what about me? What about my feelings? What about how I want to do this? What about me, I, me, I, me, I? All of a sudden, pain just fucking crashes in the fucking door and I start acting on impulse. And all of us do that. And acting on impulse gets very easy, very easy when we're taking substances, alcohol, drugs, anything. Acting on impulse and making life-changing, life-destroying, life-fucking-crippling decisions becomes very easy. Listening to your conscience becomes very, very fucking difficult. And I implore you, if you are going to go out, be safe. If you were on the fence about it, don't. I promise you, you're not going to look back in six to ten years and be like, I'm so glad that I got fucked up. 10 years ago. It's never going to happen. Not once, not never. I've never heard anybody ever say those words, not once, not never. I've never said those words. You will not hear somebody, in all seriousness, that you can take seriously say those words. But let's say we do something different, which I always invite somebody and everybody to do here. Let's say instead of going out and partying, we get our closest friends, the ones that we know we can trust the most, and our family and our children and the people that we trust and that are our inner circle of the people we love the most. And we plan to crush 2022 so thoroughly that it's going to be the year that makes the rest of our lives. Let's say instead of getting out of our own minds, instead of escaping fucking reality, which is not escaping it, you're still in it, you're still experiencing the consequences and you will continue to experience them and it's going to be waiting when you come back. But further along in the problems because the time doesn't stop. <laughs> Let's say instead we plan to crush this next year and to hold each other accountable to be the types of friends and parents and lovers that say, no, we're not going to do that anymore. We're better than that. Let's say we become the type of people that are humble enough to hear those people that we ask to hold us accountable say those things too. Because there's nothing, there, there's nothing more important than that. There really is. You are not you. You are not your emotions. You are not your desires. You are the being, you are the soul behind those things, experiencing those things. And every time we escape reality, every time we choose to run away from the fact that we have more control over everything inside of us, than we do on the outside of us, that's when we experience pain. We experience pain because we think the outside world should match what we feel like it should on the inside and our feelings are not facts. So today, please, if you are gonna go out, just be careful. I'll put money down, I'll put money down that we have a record number of overdoses today. I'll put money down. I hate to say that, but it's, it's probably real. And if you're not, or if you're on a fence, I want you to call your three closest friends up. I want you to all write five pages. <laughs> I know it seems like homework. Five pages and just hang out and talk about where you all want to be, what businesses you guys are going to start together, how you're going to partner up in order to make a better, more fulfilling year and rest of your lives for now and forever. Let's make the rest of our lives the best of our lives together. 
The best is yet to come. Love all of you.